All right, so who has the handheld mic on this side? Okay, Josette. Hi, I'm Ann Corrin. I'm Owen Brown Village Board and um, on the CLEAR Committee. Um, and I'm concerned, I'm gonna, I think I'm more offering um, some consensus of feelings on the ambiance in the community more than actually asking a question, although at the end I do have a question. Um, when I looked at your slides, I liked a lot of what you said about building uh, according to the needs of the community and designing according to the needs. What I saw in most of those slides were geometrics, uh, trees planted in straight lines, roads in very straight lines. If you look around Columbia, um, we're not straight lines by any means, um, which gets me to the ambiance that brought my husband and I here. Um, and that was native Maryland woodlands. Um, we liked being out of the city. We liked being in a community where we could, after work, take a walk around the lake, um, feel like we were in the woods. Um, so the idea of trees and straight lines is antithesis to that, um, which gets me to the kind of trees, native Maryland woodlands. Um, rather than invasive species in the landscaping, minimizing grass, putting in native Maryland ground cover, ferns, brown leaves in the winter are just fine because that's what you feel like when you're in the woodlands. Um, this would also help the watershed um, and the, the, the bird species we would have instead of uh, starlings and um, uh, house sparrows, we would have Baltimore Orioles nesting in the trees near us. Um, so, you know, that just ambiance. We used to be able to, to go down Little Patuxent Parkway and have trees all around us, and they're gone. Um, so preservation of the big old trees is really important, um, rather than waiting for little ones to grow again, because we've already watched the little ones grow. We don't, we don't want to do this again. Um, the other bit that gets into that, the beautiful lakefront that we have, is, a, is our community gathering place? Um, and I would want to know how you're going to preserve that from the traffic noise um, and the, the, the small landmarks that we have are important to us, the people tree and the hug statue, mm -hmm. um, and the, the general ambiance of we can gather at the lake, um, you know, and, and uh, keep that. Uh, I think one of the blights in our neighborhood is all the parking around the mall. And so my second part of my question then, besides how you would preserve the ambiance of the lakefront and our ability to gather there and hear, you know, a classical guitarist and not have to worry about uh, traffic noise, is, is it feasible to bury the parking underground and restore that land to walkways and pathways and multi-use community? Well, your first uh, observation about the assets uh, in Columbia, the preserved woodlands, native mixed deciduous forests, uh, you know, Piedmont, and so forth, I mean, we're, we're sympathetic to building on those assets. Those are what makes Columbia great today. So I would just uh, ask whether that exquisite natural setting, which in, in many cases I still think it needs attention and management because it's not just going to happen on its own. You did correctly mention invasive species and it does require care and nurturing to maintain the highest quality habitat and forest environment. But what about having that and also having a, other landscapes that are in parts of the town center? For example, when you reclaim some of these parking lots, does that kind of forest expression, which requires certain dimensions and widths to be successful, would you expect that to necessarily be everywhere? Maybe there are different kinds of landscape expression. When you reclaim these parking lots, and some of those examples that you commented on where there were rows of trees, um, those kinds of expressions work better in this tighter urban context because it's more challenging to create a real forest setting no, it doesn't mean that you don't, you still can choose native trees. You can still deal with the rainwater returning to the ground in planted zones where the trees grow. You can still 
to urban sustainable principles. So I would just suggest enlarge the palette to also include consideration of other ways to plant beyond just the forest environment. That's a personal observation. There was another question there. We're sympathetic also to reclaiming the parking lots, to rethinking how parking is solved because the parking is occupying significant amounts of the land. Is that the best use? Or would you rather have parks, some green spaces, retail restaurants, other places that attract pedestrians, solve the parking in a different way? So I think we're quite sympathetic to your latter observation about rethinking surface parking. Was there another question there? The noise. The noise. That's more of a challenge. The noise on Route 29, you know, the, you know, there have been tests of how to effectively screen noise, and you've seen the examples. There are physical sound barriers on, on highways. That's the best way to screen noise, and I'm not sure that's the best solution, but n noise in the urban environment, noise from 29, which is, you can hear that inside this building, um, that, that noise from the highway. So it's not so much LPP, it's more that highway. I think that is a formidable challenge to be able to have the quiet concert setting and still not be distracted by the noise of that highway. And the only solution that I know, effective solution, has been physical, physical barriers. It's been tested by the highway department. And I'm not sure that's a great solution either. So I don't have a good answer on that one. Okay, um, from a card here. What is the relationship between density and Jim Rouse's ideal idea idea of affordable housing. I'm not prepared to answer that question. I, I don't I don't know. Okay. You, Greg, you want to try that one? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, since the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s, affordability, diversity, sustainability were all bedrocks of the vision of Columbia. And, you know, it's remarkable how those have become critical elements really in every community around the country. Alan talked about the demographic growth of our countries and of our cities and the suburbs. Well, I'm seeing it in every project that I have worked on, increasing demand for affordability in housing. Uh, there is a relationship between density and affordability and uh, how we're going to address it here, we don't know yet, but we know it's a very important issue and we're focused on it. I think um, th there's just such a great tradition in history in Columbia with Enterprise and the multiple uh, groups and organizations and individuals who have committed their time and effort to this very important project. And Columbia is today what it is because of their success. So we're going to be very careful in attempting to continue that legacy in a very, you know, in a very honest and honorable way. 